thank you thank you to our uh, online webinar so um today i'm going to talk about one of uh, the noise headaches the one less noise headaches for the electro physiology studies so my name is jeffrey tan I got uh, my bachelor degrees and master degrees in National Yangming Yang University in Taiwan. And then I get my PhD at Vanderbilt University, where I study calcium channel moderation by m Guao receptor, and also study synaptic plasticity in striatum. After that, I continue my postdoctoral fellows at UC Berkeley and UC San Francisco, where I continue to study synaptic plasticity, but in different area in the hippocampus. And I also studied the signal transduction of NMD receptor. At 2007, I joined Morica Devices as application scientist. And currently, I am the product manager of Axon Electrophysiology in market devices. Like I mentioned, the topic of my presentation today is one less noise headache for electrophysiology studies. A light frequency noise is also known as electrical hum, electrical interference, or alternative currents or AC noise, or you can also can call it 50 hertz or 60 hertz noise. It depends on which country you're living right now. Now, if during the experiment, if you have this light frequency noise interference, now in your recording, you see this kind of wave. You can see, and I believe most of you are very familiar with this noise. Now, if you look at the time interval be between these two consecutive peaks, now you can see this is a, is a point zero, 0.168 seconds, that means it tells you it is 60 hertz, because one over this time is 60. That tells you 60 hertz. I, I got these traces, you know, in US. The light frequency noise is a major challenge to all electrophysiology. I believe most of you agree for this, because when this noise appear, we are unable to acquire if the signal of interest is worth more. And you have to stop the experiment and then spend time to eliminate the noise, identify the noise source and eliminate it. And of course, the data is very poor. Now, I just give you a couple example. They can see here, this is raw data. You can see there's so many pit here, that is the noise. And it's hard for you to see the signal, you know, inside this noise. Another example, you can see most of you may be familiar with these traces, is minutes. Now you can see here the minutes, you can see on the top of this 60 hertz noise. Now it's very hard to see how many events on this trace, right? Now where do noise come from? A lot of people, you know, is curious, where's the noise come from, right? The noise come from anywhere, for example, you can see from this camera, from this um, wire, this thermostat, it's a perfusion system. You can see this is different wire here. So just give you an, a, a, another, you know, a close up to here. You can see here, you can see the wire here. You can see there's the thermostat and you can see there's a camera. Just all those things might be the noise source. Now the traditional way to eliminate those noise, you know, is including in this slice. Like first of all, we identify the noise source and eliminate the noise, right? The drawback is that it's time consuming, right? I believe most of you have spent many, many hours in finding the noise source, but eventually, you know, you fail and then the noise is still there and you just give up. And the other way is to use a notch filter. Now, you can filter the signal before it feeds to the, to the digitizer. Now, the signal, the, the, but the drawback is that the signal of your interest might be also be filtered or distorted. 
And the other thing is the high how about high frequency harmonics. For example, is we are not only to eliminate the sixty hertz or fifty hertz, how about their high frequency harmonics such as 100 hertz or 120 hertz, and it could not be eliminated if you only use a single notch filter. And some people also will use the off-light filter, I acquire the data, and I eliminate the noise, filter the noise later, but you will see you cannot entirely eliminate those light frequency noise. Now, the Axon team of mnemonic devices has the best solution for you. Axon Digital 1550A with the built-in, the new features called Home Silencer that is able to eliminate the light frequency noise. Now, the same as the 1550, uh, I mean the Pure model 1550, that we have eight analog output that is good for neuronal network study, and we have eight analog input so that we can do multiple channel recording. And we have eight digit output that we can use to as a trigger external device such as stimulator or a perfusion system. And we also continue to have 50, uh, 500 kilohertz sampling weight for each and our input channel. But the difference is that we add this a new feature called Home Silencer, which is a smart and simple feature. We adapt it advanced and new adaptive technology. And we have shown that I was going to show you this feature is effectively removed to remove the light frequency noise and, like I said, associates the high frequency harmonics. And the good thing about that is that the adapt rate or the learning rate is very fast in less than one second. And also it can eliminate a large range of noise amplitude that up to 20 volt P2P in the digit, in the in the analog input you know uh, ranges. Now from here you can see that you can see here is a beautiful 60 hertz noise. Once I turn on the home silencer, the noise is gone. Right. You know, by just a single click. It's very easy and fast. And home silencer is not a filter because I know the researchers worry about is that it's a filter that can filter, you know, have the filtering effect to my acquired signal. But I'm going to demo, I will, demonst I will demonstrate to show you that it's not a filter, it's no filtering effect, and do not cause signal distortion, such as no frequency changes, no amplitude attenuation, no phase shift, and no DC voltage changes. I'm going to talk about the home silence, home silencer control. So home silencer is integrated in analog input channel zero of the digital 1550A. Now from the P-clamp, in the P-clamp you will see under the input tab of the edit protocol, you will see it's a checkbox for the home silencer. So in order to to make this home silencer to be ample, you have to check these boxes. And we also have the real-time control in Clampax. Now, on the, on the Clampax, you will see there's a real-time control, have adapt boxes, subtract boxes, and clear button. What are they? So adapt check box is that if you select this check box to turn on the real-time noise pattern learning. You check these boxes, it's going to learn this pattern. And you deselect this check box, it will turn on the learning. It just turn on the learning. That is, the second box is sub check boxes. Now you select this check box, you will turn on the adaptive noise cancellation. You deselect this check box, you turn off adaptive noise cancellation. The clear button, click this button to reset the collected cache of the learned the real time noise pattern. So if you want to clear the record the, the noise replica, then you can clear this button. Now talk about the home silencer control. It's very important point I'm going to point out here is that when you acquire, when you use non episodic stimulation mode, such as get free. I think most of people use get free mode and or other passive acquisition mode in Clampax. 
The real-time control, the real-time home silencer control is ample, still ample during the data acquisition. That means you can select and deselect these adapt or subtract boxes during the recording in non-episodic stimulation mode. However, in episodic stimulation mode, the adapt check boxes will be automatically deselected and the real-time home silencer control is disabled during the data acquisition. That means you cannot change, you cannot select or deselect the boxes in this real-time control or even you cannot clear the noise replica. Okay, so that's a very important point in here. Home science are also enabled in the membrane test. So in the membrane test, you open the membrane test, you will see this home silencer chip box. If you want to use the home silencer, you have to check these boxes. Now, in the next slides, I'm going to, to show you some of the data that obtained in using the model cell. So basically, this is a parallel recording. It's parallel, parallel recording is that the signal is treated to analog in, in, in channel zero, which I've, I've mentioned that the home silence right now is only one home silence channel that is integrated in the analog in channel zero. So I would say that is home silence data. And that's the data is the original data or the rate the raw data is split into another channel is analog in channel one channel then I saw I call this one is raw data now, so that you can see the comparison now you can see here the model cell and then this is noise you can see the wave you calculate the time interval between these two consecutive peaks you can see that is 0 0.0167 second then that indicate it, it is a 60 hertz noise. Now once you turn on the home silencer at this point you will see that there's a line if in, in the clamp fit. They see the time you turn on the home silencer. Now you look at the time you will see it's about 50 about 50 millisecond the noise is gone about 50 millisecond. Now that is true also with the 50 hertz noises because this is done in UK. So you can see the the pit the interval between these two pit is 0 0.02 second. That indicate it is a 50 hertz. Now you turn on the home silencer, the noise is gone. Now I need to tell you that because the noise is already learned, that's why it takes that fast. It's so fast to eliminate the noise. Now I also mentioned that the home silencer is not only eliminate the 60 hertz or 50 hertz, those fundamental frequency, it also eliminate the high frequency noises. You can see here, I run the noise, the power spectrum, okay, of the previous slide I show you, the 60 hertz, you can see that. The blue line show you is it's a raw data, it's a raw data. And then the red traces show you the home silence, home silence of data. And you can see the y-axis is how much the energy, okay, amplitude of the noise. You can see here is a 60 hertz, 120, 180, 240, up to 420. You can see all those spikes were eliminated. You don't see those spike in home silencer, home silencer traces, right? So, and, also, and also you can see those high frequency harmonics. It's, most of them you can see that clearly to show you is eliminated. Now, two important, I mean, features. I mean, that home silencer is better than other devices. First is the fast noise learning. Now you can see here at the bottom, this is a, this is a 60 hertz noise. Now when I turn on the home silencer, it takes less than one second, you see the, the 60 hertz noise is gone. Just so take less than one second, it learns, it learns the noise. Now, this is about the same concept because it's a fast noise adaptive brain. Now you can see here the bottom again is raw data. The, 
the upper panel is the home silencer data. Now you can see here, at this point, you can see at this portion, the noise amplitude is less, is small, and at this point, is the noise amplitude is higher. So basically, when the noise is changing, you can see the home silencer, it takes it, it take less than one second, it adapts the change of the noise. That is the beauty of the home silencer. Now, the other important feature is that the home silencer can handle a large range of the noise amplitude. In the bottom, when I do this experiment, it's basically I use Exopass 200B. At the bottom, you can see when you see the noise increase because where I change the gain. When I turn on change, increase the gain, you can see the noise amplitude is increased. In the meantime, you can see the home silencer is able to eliminate or to learn to to eliminate the uh, the uh, the light frequency noise. You can see here, right, right. You can see here. Those is basically is this small triangle, but because the why scale is so big that you don't see the triangle things, right? So you can see those is the time when you change the game is corresponded correspondingly you will see they adapt and learn and eliminate the noise. Now in the next few slide I'm going to show you some amazing data. How home silencer work, how beauty is home silencer to eliminate noise. Right. I show you, do you remember that? I show you these traces. I told you that this has the data inside this noise, right? Now, actually, what are the data, right? If the home sensor eliminate the noise that you should able to see the data. Now, let's ready to see the data. You will see amazing data here. You can see here, this is a beautiful single channel. Right, data. Now you can imagine how you can get the single channel data inside here. But with the home silencer, you're able to do that. So basically, I, this, I, I record this data in Dr. Chen's lab uh, in UC Davis, right? We do this experiment as a beta test. Now, I continue, you know, I also did a lot of uh, many uh, of experiments in different beta test uh, uh, laboratory. Now you can see from here, at right now, it's basically we are just like we are doing the real experiment. The bottom is the raw data, the upper panel is the home sciences data. We see the when you see this data, you will say, wow, the data is so beautiful. Let's see it, right? And you see the raw data here. You see the beautiful 60 hertz noise, and that is basically is the data here. But you can see the real data should be like this. This is the somatic, the fill EPSP. I get this one in hippocampus slice. It is extracellular recording, and put the ele recording electrode on the cell body layer in the C1 region of the hippocampus slide. So I get this one in the John Huguenot's lab uh, in, at Stanford University. It's a beautiful, you see home sensor can eliminate the noise, right? Now again, another application, right? So you can see here, it's beautiful 60 hertz. Now it's a beautiful, the field, the energetic field EPSP. At this experiment, the recording electro is placed at the dendritic area of the C1 region. You can see, now, I mean, it's, it's impossible you you measure the pit of the field EPSP if, you know, with the raw data, if the noise, right? But you, but after the, you know, after the noise is eliminated by home silencer, you're able to measure the pit or even for the slope, right? Now, another application is that, look at this one, right? It's the beautiful population spike. You see the population spike on the top of those, you know, uh, rural, rural coaster, right? The 60 hertz, right? Now, in the presence of a home silence, you can see the beautiful baseline and then know those, you know, the 60 hertz cycle noise is gone. Now, you can easy to analyze this data, you know, 
on the data on the on the upper panel, there's a very beautiful population spike. Now, are you ready for another application? Now, look at this one. It is a minis. I showed you before. Now, the minis on the top of those, you know, 60 hertz noise. It's hard for you to see how many events here, but you can easily see the event here. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's a sixth event, you know, after the home silencer application, right? So this is very beautiful minis. Um, Recording. This is uh, obtained uh, in uh, Dr. Jowen Wong's lab at University of Connecticut. Now, are you ready for another application? Now, this is a very beautiful noise, but the real data should be like this. This is a, a um, you know, it's a um, micro microscopic current, right? So, this is from uh, Dr. Uh, Wang He Yan at U UCSF. So, uh, actually, home silencer is the best in the market because I compare the home silencer with another device that I obtained in the market. Now, you can see I did this one again. It's a pillar recording with the raw data, with another device, and the home silencer. Now, in this experiment, because doing a single channel recording, the gain is at 20x. 20 gain. Now you can see here, you can see here in terms of the trace, the noise, right? Now the home sciences data, the noise is less than the noise obtained in, in other devices, right? Now look at the other traces, other traces. Now if I increase the gain to 50x, <coughs> 50x, now you can see the other device is unable to handle the noise amplitude so large, the noise amplitude. So basically, the other devices cannot eliminate, eliminate the noise. However, the home silencer is still able to resolve the single channel data, you can see here. So that's why, you know, home silencer is the best, the noise elimination, you know, device in the markets right now. Now, I also mentioned that home silencer, you know, do not cause signal distortion. Now, I just put, as you saw this data, population spike data, um, the, the red traces is the raw data, the population spike on the top of the 60 hertz, and the, the red traces is the home silencer data. Now, you can see here, because in this point, you can see the pit, I would like to use the time of the, of the pit. You don't see any changes, or you don't see any changes in terms of the phase, right? Now, you, you carefully to measure the amplitude of the population spike, I, there's no significant changes. Now, there's only two pit. Now, how about this? I superimpose two traces with five population spine that you can see very clearly that the home silencer does not change, I mean, obviously for the frequency, and also doesn't change the, the phase, right? Of course, we need to, how you measure the amplitude, now we need to, uh, I mean, it's, it's not easy to, to do right now, but I did, the, uh, I did the measurement of the amplitude, I don't see a big difference there. Now, another way I want to tell you, Home sensor is not a filter. It won't cause signal distortion. I, in this point, I, use, I measure the time of pit of the events. Now, I show you that I have the minutes data. So basically, I random to pick any 10 event, 10 event, and measure the time of the pit of that 10 event, because I can use the clamp fit to easily to measure the time of the event. At this experiment or analysis, I just pick randomly 10 events. Now you can see here, this is the home science data. This is raw data. The time of PIT, right, the first, the total 10 events, you can see this the same. That means the home science does not change at least the, the time of the PIT of the events, right? Now, in 
Now, in the next experiment or next slide, I want to show you is that home silencer do not affect the 60 hertz data in episodic stimulation mode. Okay. Now people worry about that. So what happens if I the the data I may have the data is 60 hertz. Does it have any effect by home silencer when I do the episodic stimulation mode? Now I say no. Now do you remember that I just remind you that in the episodic stimulation mode, we click record the button, the record button or the view button, the real time control will be disabled. And the adapt the adapt checkbox will be deselected. What that means when you in episodic stimulation mode, when you click the record button, the adapt checkbox will be deselected. That means they stop to learn the new noise pattern. They stop to learn the new noise pattern. Okay, so that is the important scenario you have to keep that in mind in episodic stimulation mode. Now, in this experiment, I want to do to show you home silences do not affect the 60 hertz, 60 hertz data is that in Campex with the model cell, I create 60 hertz signal. Okay, I create a 60 hertz signal, I'm going to show you later. And then, I mean, if you, if you do that, the 60 hertz data, the signal should not be eliminated. But the 60 live noise, the, the live frequency noise should be eliminated, right? That is, uh, I mean, the hypothesis, right? Now, in clamp fit, the 60 hertz data should be filtered by using 60 hertz notch filter because those are 60 hertz data. If I use 60 hertz notch filter, those data will be filtered. Now, I'm going to show you that is true. Now, first of all, I create a 60 hertz signal in campus by using this protocol. Think about that. That is a model cell. I give the waveform, it's called cosine waveform in 60 hertz. Okay. Then you can see this is the waveform that I created. That I created. Now, when I do the recording, you can see here, it is the raw data. You can see this is 60 hertz noise here. And this is the episode that I give the cosine waveform. So that is a 60 hertz signal there. And again, there's the baseline. This is with the live frequency noise. Now, this home silencer data, I just told you that the live frequency noise will be eliminated here and here, but not this 60 hertz signal here, right? Now, then I use this data in clamp fit, okay, in clamp fit, I use the, the op live notch filter, I push 60 hertz here. Now, you can imagine that because this is 60 hertz signal, that will be affected. So you can see here, then you can see here. After that, you can see the 60 hertz signal is distorted. That proof indicate that those are 60 hertz signal. Okay, so again, I just want to use this simple experiment to show you that in episodic stimulation mode, if your data, you predict the data will have 60 hertz signal, it won't be matter, it won't be affected. Now I'm going to use, to do a demonstration because on my desk right now, I have, a, I have computer, I have PCOM 10, but you have, and also I have a 200B, and 1550A, and with the model cell here, okay? Because I want to do the demonstration to show you how home silencers work. Now remember that in order to compatible, to use the home silencer, now the p clamp have to be in version 10.5.1, or you can use Exoscope versions 10.5.1. You can download this version from our website, from our website. Now, I just want to have a few schematic diagrams to show you how I do this connection, the, BN, the BNC cable. I look at the front panel of the 200B and the 1550A. Now, in the 200B, at the right-hand top corner, there's a scale output that basically is the data okay, from the head stage. Now, I connect this one as a parallel, connect this one to analog input channel zero, 
of the 1550A, and also use a T connector here, put a T connector, T connector here. You can parallel record it, you know, the raw data. I mean, go to the NL channel one, which is the raw data. Okay, the raw data is the NL, in, NL input channel one, and the home science data is NL channel zero, because I, do you remember that? I mentioned that the home silencer channel is integrated in analog input channel zero right now. Oh, it's only one channel. Now, at the back, the rear panel of the 20B and 1550A, I also telegraph the game. In the game, I put a T connector here that I split this to, to analog telegraph input, uh, you know, input zero and input one. So that I have the two data is all both are telegraph and I will show you later. The other accessory accessory part, like I just want to use this slide to show you. Now this T connector and the BNC cable make connection here that you can see this here. That is scale output of the twenty B. And one of the line go to the channel zero is home silencer data. The other Y go to here is the raw data. And this is an analog output, basically. Now, that is half stage. I have the model cell, the same right now put on the 20B. This is the, the boxes. This box I use as a noise source, as a noise source to pick up the noise. Now, basically, at the boxes, the other side, I have the other side, this is connected to a wire. That is kind of like, that is a antenna. You put this wire, you know, to, the bed of the instrument, a lot of wire there, right? As a antenna to uptake the live frequency noise. That basically is the setup. Now I'm going to show you, I switch to the Climpex. I'm going to show you how does it work, okay? Now first of all, you know, you go to the, you know, telegraph, no, sorry, you go to the telegraph, uh, configure, telegraph instrument, like, I mean, analog input channel zero is telegraph input zero, and the one is telegraph input one. Okay, so that I have these two channel is telegraph. One for raw data, no, sorry, this for home sensor data, this is for the raw data. Now, I can also go to the left bench, double check. Okay, in the channel zero, I give the name home silence. So, check this unit scale factors, and the channel one is the raw data. Okay, hit okay. Now, <clears throat> look at the, the real time control here. You can see the home signs are here. You can check and select, deselect, deselect, or select. Okay, it is fine. Okay, you can, you can, it's disable. No, it is amble when in caffeine mode. But in episodic stimulation mode, those will be disabled. But right now, we are not running the experiment so that you can check the boxes anytime. So go to the edit protocol, go to the input tab. You can see you have to check these boxes first to amble the home silencer. Now right now, I check these boxes, home silencer is amble. So right now, the home silencer is only integrated in the channel zero. So I hit OK here. Now, the beauty of the home silencer is that once you check these boxes, when the instrument is turned on, it starts to learn the noise pattern. Right now, the home silencer is learning right now. Let's say here, I don't do the subject first because I want you to see what's the data. Now, remember that the, the head stage connect to the model cell. Right now the model cell, I put it to the bath, bath position and on the top of the noise source. Now when I click this one, you'll see the noise supposedly. Let's see what happened here. Now you see the beautiful noise here. There are noise, right? Right, so you can, you can measure the P2P that can tell you is the 60 hertz noise here. Now, because right now it's learning right now, and you also check these boxes, and these boxes 
is also chatter. So that means home silencer is amble, and it's just learning. And when you click these boxes, you will see, suppose because it's already learned it, all right, it takes about 15 minutes a second, you will see the noise is gone. Let's do it. Are you ready? Three, two, one. I can see the noise is gone. Right, if I keep doing this one, you can see this is raw data, and you can see the noise is gone. Right. If I deselect this one, I can see the noise come back. Right. And I check this box, noise is gone. Right. Now remember that if I uncheck these boxes, okay, the noise is already learned, so that it won't affect. You know, it won't affect the noise already learned. They use the noise it learned. If I deselect this one, you can see the noise come back. But if I check this spot again, the noise is gone because they use the noise they learned before. The noise is gone. All right. And that I can show you in this experiment is that the home silencer can eliminate the noise very fast if the noise patterns is already learned. Now, the second experiment I'm going to show you is that, okay? Now, remember that at this point, I use the get free mode right now. I use the get free, okay? So that I can select and deselect during the acquisition. It's fine, okay? But not in episodic stimulation mode. Later, I will do that to you, right, to show you, right? Now, the next one I want to show you, how fast it learn, how fast it learn. Now, first, I want to deselect this one Okay, and clear this one, and clear this one. Okay, so, and then I can do this one, okay, because I cleared this button. I mean, and also this one is deselected, so that they did not learn anything right now. They don't learn, any, learn anything. Now, so that even though I subtract this box, I select these boxes, it won't do anything. But you will see in the climb, but you will see when this box is is selected, then you see the color is changes. Now, what happens is that if I, okay, if I check these boxes, okay, let's do it. Now, you will see, you know, it starts to learn and subtract. Learn and subtract. Now you see here the scale for each division is only 100 millisecond. 100 millisecond, you can see here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So less than one second, less than one second, home silencer learn and subtract. Okay, that's the beauty of the home silencer. Now, the other one I want to show you is that, now let's do like this, okay, keep doing like this. Now what happens is that right now, if I change the game, when I turn on the game, I mean the noise pattern is changes. That the home silencer, what happens to the home silencer? Let's do it. Now I'm ready to change the game. Okay, let me slow down a little bit. And let me go back there. Right, so when I turn on this one, now I'm fortunate because this, this, the changes, right? If you measure from here to here, I mean, in less than one second. I mean, you learn and adapt, and learn and subtract. Okay, let me do one more time, you can see it clearly, right? See here, right? See here? Right. So it take again when the pattern noise pattern is changes, it takes less than one second. It adapts the change of the noise and learn it and subtract it. Okay. Now the experiment the next experiment I want to show you how this one how a uh, home science to handle a large noise amplitude. Okay, I think that's very important. Right. How it you can see here, right? I mean again Less than one second. Gonna adapt the change of noise. Okay. So anyway, now the experiment I'm I'm going to tell you is that 
if uh, if the noise amplitude in here is keep change is keep increasing by changing the gain, the noise amplitude is changing. How well the home silencer adapt the noise? I'm going to show you this one. Okay, now we see something like this in here. That means this way is the learn and subtract. Okay, now let me go back here. Right now I turn on and you know lower the gain. Now I do this one. I increase right now. You can see here. You can see here. I increase again. I increase again. Right. So I keep doing this. Okay. It can up to the amplitude of this one can up to 220, 20 volt. I mean the home silencer, you know, still able, right, still able to eliminate the light frequency noise. I mean, that is the beauty. I compare with another device that it will maximize, easy to maximize the amplitude. That's why you still, do you still remember that? When I compare with other device in 20 gain, 20 X gain and 50 X gain, now the other device is unable to eliminate the noise, the light frequency noise, right? Now, the last experiment demonstration I want to share with you is that I want to, sh to share with you how well, I mean, uh, how well when I do the apostolic stimulation. Okay, apostolic stimulation. Now, before that, I want to come back to here. I want to show you the, the memory test. You can see the home signs here. You check these boxes. Okay, you can also can use the home signs in the memory test. Okay, just I want to show you. Now, now let me come back to the another experiment, the last experiment basically for so for me is that okay, so I want to do the in the apostolic stimulation. I want to show you again to show you I create a noise, I'm gonna create a sixty hertz data. Okay. Now first of all, I come to here, use apostolic stimulation mode, okay. Apostolic sti uh, stimulation, uh, stimulation mode. So I want I want to use 2.2 second. I just want to show you one traces. It's easier, okay? Then I go to the waveform that I'm going to use a cosine, a cosine, okay? Give the amplitude 100 millivolt, and zero delta level, and I give I give one second, and I give here 60 hertz. All right, so that's the protocol. So when I do this one, you can update preview. You can see, right, for you to see it clearly, that that is the 60 hertz, the waveform. Okay, so I close this one. I okay this one. Okay, now. Again, let us see here, the input, the home sensor is checked. The learning right now, subtract is working, eliminate. So when I hit this data, when I click this data, okay, now I want you, I want to draw your attention. When I do this one, you see it here, the home sensor, the home sensor real time control will be first disabled and that the adapt chat box will be deselected, okay? Because I don't want it to learn. So look at the data. You see here? Okay, you can see here. So, adapt chat box, right? Do you remember that? Okay, I want to show you one more time. Okay, one more time. I can clear this one, whatever. Okay, I can, okay, so. So one more time, okay. So do this one, unselected and disabled. All right, so let me show you the data. I open the clamp fit, the last recording. Now you can see here, I want to show you here. You can see this is home silencer here, right? It's home silencer, right? So, you can see the baseline is gone, it's gone, all right? But the data is still here. This is data here, right? So, let me show you the data. 
So now when I do the filter, okay, okay, this something is different. Okay, let me do one more time. I saw something is different here. Oh, I see. I see something is different. The game is different. Okay, sorry about that. Let me do one more time. Sorry about that, okay? Now, this, the game is different, okay? So, let me do one more time. Look at this way. Adapt, okay? Do this one. Yeah, that is what I mean. Okay? Okay, here is the real data. Okay, forget the, the one that I did because in the wrong game. So, when I go to the clamp fit, then... The last recording. Now you can see here that is the data, right? That's the real data. So this raw data is home silence data. Now I showed you before, and you can see here it will show you when the home silence is on, right? So from here you can see I show you that the light frequency is the raw data. You can see the light frequency noise is 60 hertz, 60 hertz signal here. Now, in the home signs of data, the 60 hertz light frequency noise is gone. You can see it. The noise is gone compared to here. If you look at, right, you look at the baseline, it's gone. And it's gone here, right? But the 60 hertz signal is still here. It's still here. The home silencer do not affect the 60 hertz signal in the apostolic stimulation mode because the adaptive box is deselected. Now, if I use the same one, this data, in order to prove that it's a, it, those are 60 hertz signal, I use the filter. It's a 60 hertz, the notch filter, 60 hertz. The full traces, that when I hit OK, you will see. Now, those data is filtered by 60 hertz notch filter that indicate the data I acquire here is 60 hertz. Okay, so anyway, let me go back to my presentation slides. Right, so I hope that in my presentation, I show you the demonstration and I show you that the home silencer is a simple, smart, fast, and powerful features for light frequency noise elimination. Again, I mean, it's very important, right? The home science provide, provides a filter-free noise elimination. No frequency changes, no amplitude attenuation, no phase shift, and no DC changes. No DC voltage changes. Now, DGDF 1558 plus home silencer and both acquisition of small signals and support interruption free data acquisition and save your time for noise even for checking for noise source and also the most important is is that deliver high quality data so with the home silencer you know who need this anymore right you don't need to worry about making the noise i mean put the uh, uh, aluminum foil and uh, to making the ground grinding cable right so Finally, I want to thank several people, uh, those on the list, basically our beta test laboratory, Dr. Chen, and Dr. Huganet, Dr. Wen, Dr. Yen, and Dr. Uh, Yuri uh, uh, Kirichou, and also uh, Peter Prost and the uh, University of Oxford. I also want to thank you to my team right, for their effort to make this home silencer, you know, make it happen, right? So. The last slide I want to say is that, just want to remind you is that this recording, this webinar is recorded. And then if you want to see this uh, uh, webinar or the previous webinar, you can go to the molecular.webis.com. Okay, go to molecular.webis.com. Then you can select the list of the event from the left-hand side, but you need to focus, uh, you know, to select the, uh, I mean, it's basically the series is called the getting the most out of the PCAM po uh, program. Okay. Now, finally, I want to say thank you for uh, for your attention to my uh, webinar. Uh, thank you so much, and I uh, hope to see you next time. Thank you.